my dad is not a member and my mom was a member, but she passed away when I was 15. And my dad's actually like kind of atheist. And so uh, I always relied upon like good friends and the family of friends and my own like extended family and their examples who helped uh, motivate me to, to go on a mission. Um, but my dad, he was cool. Like he was, he was supportive. He thought it was going to be like a kind of a, um, more of a like growing up type of adventure, like getting out and seeing the world and like becoming maybe more cultured or whatever, which I hope happened. <laughs> um, but it was that and much more. And so it's been cool to kind of tell him about some of my mission experiences and things like that. And the second half of my mission, I took President Monson's challenge to to write him every week, handwritten note instead of just emails. And so that was really cool. And I feel like our relationship got stronger and things like that. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was good. So I think even if you don't have a member family, like immediate member families, like backing you up, like it can still be a positive experience for you and you can help convince them of that because I grew as a person in many ways. Um, but I think the biggest way obviously is spiritual, but they won't really understand that maybe fully. Yeah, I have one older brother. Uh, he's four years older and he's he's really active now. Uh, he didn't serve a mission. Uh, he just got his degree in accounting and then joined the army, which was like a mission for him. He had so many experiences uh, giving blessings and callings and things like that. And he, I, one of my favorite stories from him is that he didn't, I don't think he ever really read the Book of Mormon too much before, um, but he said when he was in basic training that if he read the Book of Mormon, he could do push-ups. Uh, and he's like, if I didn't read the Book of Mormon, I couldn't do push-ups. And so <laughs> that's kind of like how he, at least from what I understand, how he started developing his testimony of the Book of Mormon was he found like literal strength from it. So I thought that was cool. Yeah, I know my mom obviously would be would be super happy that I, I went and served a mission. Um, one of her one of her favorite songs to play on the piano was Oh That I Were an Angel, um, which is from Alma um, I think twenty nine and it's all about it's all about missionary work and um, and so I kind of think about like my mom being passed away and stuff is that she was an angel. And she's like declaring the word of God with the trump, you know, on the other side of the veil. And, and so it's just kind of cool that I was on my mission. Maybe I could, maybe I could feel like we were up to the same work. And I don't know if I ever really like felt like some mysterious, like protective hand, but I always think about her and uh, I just know that she'd be proud. And I think one of the things that my mom taught me that has stuck with me the most was when uh, we were coming out of the grocery store. Um, I'd like to like ride the grocery cart to the parking lot or whatever. That's not related, but I just like doing that. I still do it. My wife thinks I'm funny. Um, but I remember seeing other people just kind of put the shopping carts like on the curb and then just get in the car. And I was just like, and one day I was like, well, that seems easier. Like maybe we should just put our shopping carts on the curb. And she, she told me, she's like, no, whatever you can do to make someone else's day easier. I would always do that. And so I went and returned the cart to the place because I knew that some worker had to go out there and gather all the cards and things like that. Um, but that lesson stuck with me, just whatever I can do every day to make someone else's day easier, the small things, uh, I think it makes a big difference. So coping with my mom's death, like I think it was, it sounds weird, but it was a lot easier like than maybe I you'd think it should be just because I think, um, the Lord really like poured out his spirit and it was just, there's a lot of comfort and good support and people like that. Um, but it's also kind of like after, after that sort of, sort of fades, uh, I think the hardest thing was, um, when something cool would happen in your life, um, and you just kind of like space that she was gone and you'd say, Oh, I can't wait to go home and tell my mom. Uh, and then you'd like realize, Oh wait, I can't. And like, so things like that were, were more the hard, the hard times. But I mean, I, I pray and I had a state president who <clears throat> once asked me like in an interview, he's like, do you ever talk to your mom? And I just like, never even like thought of that. And I was like, I was like, no, but I guess I could. And, and so I, I kind of sometimes do that. Not like any weird, <laughs> like, 
I don't like grab any like sorcery or anything to talk to my mom, but I just, I don't know. I kind of think of her as still there stuff. So other people's parents were so influential. Um, I've like at my wedding, I, uh, you know, you're supposed to do like the daddy daughter dance and then like the mother son dance. Um, I just danced with like my aunts and then my friends' moms because I felt like I had many mothers. Um, and so I think there's an opportunity for, for people in the church to like, um, help even raise other, other kids who like might not be their own. Like I felt like I, I would like hang out at other people's houses all the time. I had, I had milk rations at two of my friends' houses because I was over there all the time. I drank so much milk that they're like, you can only have one cup a day, you know? Um, and so I was just like, they just, people just included me as part of their family. And I think that really helped, helped me to, um, like, I mean, I, maybe I had like a non-traditional Mormon background, but in other ways, I feel like I was raised in the church just like everyone else was because of those good friends and their families and my family.